We begin this hour with the political uproar in the United Kingdom. British Prime Minister Liz Truss announced she is stepping down after just six weeks in office. Truss announced her resignation outside of 10 Downing Street earlier today. Her surprising decision to quit comes after her policies triggered significant turmoil for the UK's financial markets and backlash from her fellow party members. Given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King to notify him that I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. CBS News foreign correspondent Ramey Innocencio is outside of 10 Downing Street in London. Ramey, you have been covering this all morning. So tell us, really, what changed between the Prime Minister's statements just last night when she said she was not a quitter and her resignation today? Right, that defiance clearly rings in all of our heads. She said, I'm a fighter, not a quitter. And then in the evening yesterday, there was this vote of basically what ended up being a vote of confidence or no confidence for the prime minister. It actually wasn't an official vote for that. It was actually a vote about fracking for shale gas. But in effect, Truss and her allies said, listen, you have to support this bill. If you don't, that means you don't support Truss. Turns out that a lot of the Conservative Party members didn't want to vote for the bill. They were forced to. And there are allegations now floating around that many legislators were actually pushed to vote, physically shoved, physically manhandled to vote for this bill. In addition, one legislator reportedly was left crying in the lobby after all of this chaos. It caused so much anger, so much frustration, already at a time of huge tension uh, with lawmakers and trusts. And the fact that now she is out, um, she has made this realization that she could no longer maintain her power. She spoke to the 1922 committee. This committee uh, is basically the rules committee for uh, party leaders and how uh, they are chosen and how rules are changed to keep them in power. Something also happened this morning at that meeting when she came out at 1.30 p.m. local time here just behind us and she said, I am resigning the premiership. Remy, I think I hear chanting behind you. I'm just curious what the reaction has been there in the UK. Yeah, uh, there is often chanting out on the street here, people saying down with the Tories, people calling for a general election. Well, now they have a, a little bit more of a step closer to being down with the Tories, at least being uh, down with Liz Truss. Uh, but um, the mood here is one of many people is relief. Um, there was an audible applause on the street uh, when we first heard the news when Liz Truss uh, said that she was going to resign. But with that said, the Conservative Party and the country is not out of the woods by far in terms of this political chaos over the past six weeks. Uh, we have to get through the leadership contest for the Conservative Party over the next week, October 28th. We should know when the next Conservative Party leader is. That, in effect, means we will know who the next uh, prime minister will be. Yeah, it, it's... Such an interesting distinction between the U.S. system and the system there in the U.K., Ramey, because uh, they're not changing parties. It's still going to be a conservative leader. And even Liz Truss came in after former Prime Minister Boris Johnson was embroiled in controversy and for such a long period. It's good to note that Liz Truss was not voted by the public. Right. You know, it's yeah. very different. But, you know, it's, when we're making that comparison between Boris Johnson and Liz Truss, he had staying power with lots of controversies. This is this is one real controversy and uproar about her economic policies more than anything else. And she's stepping down so quickly. What is the difference between those two? You're absolutely right. Um, Boris Johnson had a Teflon-like quality to him, and Liz Truss clearly did not. Uh, when it comes to support, we have to remember that Boris Johnson enjoyed a long line, a, a long time in the spotlight here in the United Kingdom. Before he was a politician, he was a journalist. He was very well known. His face, his voice, his writings were very well known. 
He also had the support not just of the Conservative Party members voting across the country, which is hugely important because they actually dictate who the Premier eventually becomes. He also had the support of his fellow Conservative lawmakers here in Westminster. Now, flip that and compare that to Liz Truss. Liz Truss had the support of people across the country, the Conservative Party members in particular, within her party. But she did not have the support within Westminster. It turned out that there was someone else there, Rishi Sunak, the former Chancellor of the Exchequer, the former Finance Minister, who actually had the support there. So when push came to shove, she really just didn't have that base that Boris Johnson enjoyed over the past few decades. Remy, what does her resignation mean for the future of the Conservative Party in the UK? And who are some of her potential replacements? Sure. Um, well, if the Conservative Party doesn't right its ship, this is a party that will be lost to the political wilderness, at least for the next election set to happen by the end of 2024. Uh, now, in terms of who may come up, there are six, maybe seven candidates who ran the last time, and the last time was only a couple months ago, right? Uh, but they are very likely to put their names back in the ring. Uh, there are betting odds that have now come up. Um, Liz Truss is now very much quickly an afterthought. People are looking ahead to this succession and Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, apparently is now favored to become the Premier, but among at least a top two or three, Boris Johnson's name has returned and of course he just stepped down September 6 in order to make way for Liz Truss. There are people who are huge Boris backers, but even some Boris backers are saying that it might be too much too soon, especially for the fact that he is undergoing an investigation, a probe for potentially lying to Parliament when it came to Partygate. Partygate, by the way, uh, if you'll remember, was when um, Boris Johnson allegedly uh, had um, parties here at 10 Downing Street. In defiance of the legislation about COVID restrictions that he had himself uh, put together. Right. So uh, how long is this process going to take? What happens next, Remy? Right. Only about a week, we're told. When Liz Truss came out, she actually said herself, October 28th, the next week or so, we should have uh, the next uh, leader of the Conservative Party. Now, compare this to uh, the last election uh, earlier this year, and that took much longer, seven weeks. So seven weeks versus one week. This is going to be very, very fast. It is clearly in the interest of the Conservative Party to get through it, get through it quickly, because a lot of people across the country are fed up, are tired, are thinking we have to go back to the polls again, we have to choose another leader yet again. So it's in the best interest of the Conservative Party, not just for now, but also for the future, uh, for a potential general election, to choose someone that they can rally around to show the public that they do have their act in order. With that said, there were many, many critics, we know that already, who are saying that the leadership contest here is simply a rearranging of the deck chairs that is the Titanic of the Conservative Party. A lot of people are saying that this is a sinking ship and there are calls for a general election from the opposition Labour Party. Keir Starmer is the head of that party. Of course he wants a general election because if he wins and polls in, it suggests that he would and his party would, then he would likely become the next Prime Minister of the UK. So much instability there. Mm -hmm. Ramey, thanks so much for your time and your reporting. Well, we just mm -hmm. Joining us now is Jack Blanchard. He is a Politico Europe's UK editor. Jack, good to have you. So tell us, what made now the right time for Liz Truss to step down from office? Well, it just became clear this week that she could no longer command the support of her own party. There has been no prime minister in this country who's ever started their term so disastrously as Liz Truss did last month. As you said, crashing the UK economy on the financial markets within a couple of weeks of coming to office. She's never really recovered from that moment. Uh, and the support for her amongst her own party has just drained away so quickly. They've looked at their poll ratings. They have collapsed. And one the other day saying that if there was a general election here tomorrow, they wouldn't even finish in second place, let alone first. Um, and there has just been a series of calamities. It got to the point this week that it just became clear that her own MPs, her lawmakers, did not support her anymore. She could not get uh, key votes through Parliament and that she was going to have to step down for someone else who, who hopefully can. 
She Truss says a new conservative party leader will be selected in the next week. How is that process going to unfold? Well, they're still figuring that out. I mean, the last time we had a leadership contest, which was just last this summer, mm -hmm. um, it, it lasted a couple of months. There was a long contest. First of all, the lawmakers chose their uh, favorite candidates. Then the party membership had a sort of six week voting contest. They don't have time for any of that now. They're going to have to move very, very quickly. We're going to see candidates throwing their hats into the ring over the weekend. There's going to be a vote amongst uh, MPs, lawmakers on Monday. We could see someone crowned as quickly as that uh, if a clear winner emerges. If not, there'll be a series of runoff votes, maybe a quick vote of the party membership online because there's no time for real paper ballots now. Um, and, and a new leader announced by next Friday at the very latest. Uh, Jack, you alluded to the fact that this is the UK's second prime minister to resign in less than four months. Obviously, that was Boris Johnson. Uh, and the turmoil that Liz Truss has faced, even becoming a joke, the, the, um, the question of whether a, a head of lettuce would last longer than Liz Truss's time in office and an actual, like, countdown with the lettuce winning. Given all of what the Conservative Party is facing, what will that next prime minister, who's also going to be a member of the Conservative Party, be taking on once they ascend to the prime ministership? I mean, this is an impossible job right now, as, as Liz just has just shown. I mean, on, you are fighting battles on so many fronts. The economy is not in a great place. Inflation is surging here even faster than it is in many other countries, it means people mortgage rates are going up. Energy bills are through the roof because of the war in Ukraine. And the, the person coming in to lead right now has got this divided tumultuous party, Conservative Party, so many MPs pulling in different directions. It's a very, very different beast to steer. They are 30 points behind in the opinion polls. They are facing a wipeout at the next election. So, and, and financial markets have been so rocked by the economic policies that Liz Truss tried and failed to implement um, that that needs stabilizing as well. And, and there is a very big budget deficit that's going to have to be filled in a very short space of time to do that. So that means spending cuts, it means tax rises, all the sorts of things that make you even less popular with the public than they already are. So it's a heck of a job for somebody. Um, we're going to find out in the next few days who that is, but I, I don't envy them, I can tell you. Mm. Jack, there is talk about former Prime Minister Boris Johnson coming back and serving as Britain's new Prime Minister. How would that work and how likely is it that could actually happen? I mean, he wants to do it. You know, he, he was really dragged out um, in the summer by his fingertips and he made it very clear he would like to come back. His final words in the House of Commons were, hasta la vista, baby. Uh, you know, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, coming back a second time. And that is what he would love to do. Um, there's nothing stopping from standing as a candidate. He is still a member of parliament. He can do that. He's still a member of the Conservative Party. Um, but he would need the support of a lot of his fellow MPs. And that is the problem he's going to have to face. Because this is such a quick contest, they've set the bar very, very high for how many of your supporters you need amongst your colleagues to stand a fighting chance. The problem Boris Johnson has got is that he's still very unpopular with many of his colleagues, which is why they threw him out in the first place in the summer. And he hasn't got very much time at all to turn that around. Apparently, he's on holiday in the Caribbean right now. He's going to have to scramble back from there and start making a lot of phone calls. It doesn't feel likely that he could do it. Having said that, there's one caveat. He remains a very popular figure amongst the Conservative Party members, the grassroots out mm. in the country. And if he somehow get his name onto a final ballot paper with them voting, he stands every chance of winning. So it's not impossible, but it's an uphill struggle. Mm. Stay tuned. Yeah. Jack Blanchard, thanks so much for joining us.